Hello, and welcome to week number four of BC Calculus. Let's get going. Last week we were talking about um, finding volumes of rotation. Um, and I think, <laughs> going over this problem, we did not talk about the washer method. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably a washer method. But let's, let's take a look at um, problem part number one. It says, let R be shaded be the shaded region bounded by the graph um, y is equal to x e to the x squared and the line y is equal to negative 2x. Okay, so when you're on an AP test, the best thing to do is just write in everything that you know. And this is y is equal to x e to the x squared. Um, find the area of r. Well, the area of r is just top function minus bottom function. So we have to find... Um, so the integral is going to be from 0 to 1, because I'm going from 0 to 1, and it's just top function minus bottom function. So it's just going to be x e to the x squared minus negative 2x, or positive 2x. Plug it into your calculator, you should get the answer. Part B, it says, right, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when r is rotated about the horizontal line y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so there we go. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is negative 2 down here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's negative 2. So this point here is 1, negative 2. I'm rotating around this horizontal line. So that is definitely going to be the washer method. So obviously we can't do that just as yet. Um, right, but do not evaluate an expression of one or more integrals that gives the perimeter of our home. Huh, we can't do that one either because today we're going to learn how to find the arc length of a function. All right, so two, two problems that we can't do on this one. All right, so if I take a look at part A, we have x e to the x squared, negative 2x, from 0 to 1, take the integral, answer should be e plus 1 over 2. Now, today we're going to be talking about the washer method. And the washer method is used to calculate the volume of a rotational solid even if part of it is hollow. Essentially this process or the process are the outer and inner radii of the rotation which extend from the axis of rotation respectively to the far and near edges of the region. So the formula for finding the area using the washer method is right here. So volume, and this is basically all it is saying is volume is equal to pi times integral from A to B of la the large radius squared minus the small radius squared. That's it. That is it. That is the whole formula. Um, so basically you're finding the volume of the whole object, and then you're subtracting off the volume of the missing part. So if I was going to take an example, let's take this one here. It says, let R be the region in the first quadrant bounded by the graph of Y is equal to 2 to the squared of X. So this is Y is equal to 2 to the squared of X. And the horizontal line, Y is equal to 6. And the Y axis is shown above. Find the area of R. Okay, well, I could do that at the top. So integral from 0 to 6. Top function, which was 6. Minus bottom function, which is 2 squared of X take the integral, I can find the area between these two curves. Not a problem. Part B, write, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the horizontal line, Y is equal to 7. Okay, so Y is equal to 7 is way up here. Now, when I do a problem like this, these different colors, first thing I do is I put in my two radiuses. This looks like small radius. This looks like big radius. So remember, it's big radius squared minus small radius squared. Well, the small radius is pretty easy. It's just one, isn't it? If you're going from six to seven, that radius is one. Not a problem to solve. Now the big radius, how do you find the distance between here and here? And it's always just the top function minus the bottom function. So my big radius is going to be seven minus two to the square root of x. My small radius is going to be 1. So my integral, I'm going to go from 0 to 9. Big radius squared. 
So it's 7 minus 2, the square root of x, squared, minus the small radius, which is 1 squared. That's it. That is, and it, it said to, to write but do not evaluate. So I can just leave my answer just like this. Let's see what the AP test says. For part one, um, and I didn't finish working it out, it's just 0 to 9 of 6 minus 2 to the square root of x, and then they worked it out and got 18. Fairly easy problem. Part B, large radius, 7 minus 2 to the square root of x squared minus small radius. Now, 7 minus 6, you, obviously, you just put 1 there, 1 squared. That is it. Not difficult to find the volume of rotation when you are using the washer method. A brief word of warning, we've been rotating about the x and y axis exclusively. This makes it easy to find the lengths of the radii of rotation. As the bottom boundary is usually zero and subtracting zero is arguably even easier than you might think. However, in some problems, you'll be rotating around something other than the axis. So be careful when calculating the radii of rotation. This is a problem I used to give my AP kids um, every year. Um, they had to pass this before we went on. It is, you know, this is all the different types of ways that you can rotate something. It says write but do not evaluate an integral function to find the volume of rotation for each problem about the y or about the x-axis. Okay, so if I was going to do about the y x-axis, first thing I do, big radius, small radius. So this is going to be the integral and what is that, 2 to 4? Oops, 2 to 4, and that's going to be 2 squared minus 1 half x quantity v squared. All right, that's rotating around the x-axis. About the y-axis, well, whenever you rotate something about the y-axis, you have to rewrite the equation so it's x equals. So if that example, y is equal to 1 half x, I would have to rewrite that as 2y is equal to x. And my other equation, I guess we, this, is my, this would be my other equation, it would just be x equals 2, right? So now if I want to rotate about the y-axis, I'm going to use a red line here. So that's my small radius. This is going to be my large radius. So large radius is going to be 2y. So this is going to, and now remember, we go on the y-axis. So what is that? 1 to 2. So I'm going from 1 to 2, integral of 2y, quantity squared, minus small radius. Well, the small radius is just 2, isn't it? That would be rotating about the y-axis. About the line x equals negative 2. Okay, well... Now we're not rotating around an axis anymore. X equals negative 2 is a line, a vertical line. But guess what? If you look at this, my small radius now, I just added 2 on. So my small radius is just going to be 2 plus 2 or 4. So this is going to be the integral from 1 to 2. And also this one, I'm just adding 2 on to the large radius. So this is going to be 2y plus 2, quantity squared, minus 2 squared. I could have just put 4 there. It doesn't matter. What about the line x equals 6? Well, x equals 6 is way over here. So I'm rotating around this. Okay, well, let's get a different color here. So now if I draw my axis or my radiuses, this looks like the large radius. And this looks like the small radius. So if I'm rotating around the line x equals 6, okay, well, I go from 2 to 6. So it looks like the big radius is just 4, isn't it? So I'm still 1 to 2, 4 squared minus. And then how do you find the distance from here to here? Well, it's just going to be 6 minus my equation, 2y, quantity squared. I would suggest that you erase this and you go back and you and you try it yourself. Every one of those problems you should be able to set up.
And it is so important to be able to find the big radius and the small radius. It is important to be able to find the distance. It doesn't matter if you're rotating around a line above, if you're rotating, if the, if the line is below the x-axis, you just add that value on. If it's above, you take the top function minus the bottom function, that gives you radius. So you should be able to write an equation or write an integral to find the volume of rotation of any, doesn't matter if it's rotated around the x-axis, the y-axis, uh, align y is equal to something, align x equals something, you have to be able to write equations, and it is just writing out large radius minus small radius. That is it. Okay. All right, so let's take a problem here. It says, let R be the region in the first quadrant bounded by the graphs y is equal to the square root of x and y is equal to x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to graph this out. Um, it is, you know, you shouldn't have a difficult time trying to graph some of these functions. Um, the square root of x is just going to be a function that looks like this. Oops. <laughs> Better put on my tool so I can draw a graph. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Uh, this is one-third x, so that's going to look something like this. Okay, that's probably going to be an important point. That's an important point. So I've got zero to zero. And I can just set the square root of x equal to x over 3 and just solve that. So if I square, that's x equals x squared over 9. I'll bring the 9 up here. Uh, divide through by x. x equals 9, I believe. So this point here is 9, comma 3. All right. So now it says find the area of r. Well, Top function, so I've got the integral from 0 to 9, top function, which is square root of x, minus bottom function, which is x over 3. That it gives me my area. So that's part A. Part B, it says find the volume of the solid generated when r is rotated about the vertical line, x equals negative 1. Okay, so x equals negative 1 is over here. Well, as soon as I as soon as I know that I'm rotating about the y-axis or an x equals something, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my equation. So y is equal to the square root of x. I'm going to rewrite this as y squared equals x. And then I have y is equal to x over 3. So I'm going to rewrite this as, uh, what is that going to be? So I'm going to multiply by 3, so it gives me 3y equals x. So, oh, x equals 3y. Yeah. All right, so I've got an x equals. Now, remember, my integral is going to go from bottom to top now. So what is that? So I've got an integral from 0 to 3, because it's on my y-axis. I'm rotating around this, so this is going to add 1. Okay, so I'm going to have my function. So this is big radius, small radius. So my big radius is going to be 3y plus 1, quantity squared, minus the small radius. Well, then my small radius is going to be y squared plus 1. And then you could just work it out, and you could find your answer. Fairly easy to do. And then part C says the region R is the base of a solid. For the solid, the cross section perpendicular to the y-axis are squares. Okay, so we have squares here. Remember, we only have to find the area of one square. So it's a, along the y-axis. So again, my integral is going to be from 0 to 3. And I just need to find 1. Okay. So what is my distance from here to here? Well, isn't that going to be um, 3y? minus y squared. And then since it's a square, this would be the base. I might just have to square it. All right, let's take a look at, and I didn't solve any of them. But you can see that you set it up, 0 to 9, square root of x minus x over 3. Part B, we've got 3y plus 1 squared minus y squared plus 1 squared. Boom, from 0 to 3. Oh, I forgot to put out in front of my volume. Shame on me. 
and then the last problem, 0 3, and then 3y minus y squared, squared. And that would give us our answers. So fairly easy to find volume of rotation. Now the other thing that we're working on this week is arc length. Arc length is a, it's just a formula. I mean, it is the integral from the start to the finish of the arc of 1 plus the derivative squared. So it's a fairly easy formula. I mean, it's not. Now, you're not going to be able to find the arc length um, without a calculator. I, I tried today, and I, I couldn't even find it with the calculator. Um, my calculator is super old. It's a TI-83. I know nowadays the calculators, you can take an integral um, without doing much. Uh, I had way too many parentheses, so when I put it in my calculator, it just kept giving me an error. But I was trying to prove that this formula does work. And I thought to myself, well, what better way to show that it works is to find the arc, or the arc length of a semicircle. Because I know how to find the arc length of a semicircle. I know a circle is 2 pi r. That's the circumference 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle, 2 pi r. So I know that if I had this equation, let's say I had x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. Well, that means my radius is 4. So I could find the circumference of the semicircle, because I could just divide by 2. So circumference, or this arc length, would just be pi times r, or it would just be 4r, which is like 12 point something, right? So that would be my circumference. Now I thought, OK, I can. Now I can use my formula to figure out if it's the same answer. Okay. Oh, this should be four times pi. Um, so what I did is I just rewrote this. I just said, well, okay. So bring the x squared over here. So this is going to be y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. That would be. And then I thought, okay, I need my derivative. Well, I can find the derivative of that. So that's 16 minus x squared. To the one half. If I take the derivative of that, I bring the one half down, leave the middle alone, uh, times the derivative of the middle, which is negative 2x. Well, that 2 is going to cross off that 2. So really, I have negative x over the square root of 16 minus x squared. That's my derivative. Okay, so if I wanted to find the, the arc length, all I'd have to do is go from negative 4 to 4. Uh, and then take the, the square root of 1 plus negative x over the square root of 16 minus x squared squared. And if I plug that in to my calculator, which I could not, <laughs> I kept getting an error. So if one of you guys has a calculator that you just plug that into, try it and see if you get the same answer as you know, the circumference. Now, some people would say, well, isn't that going to give you the whole circle? No. Because when you take when you take y squared, it's plus or minus. If you just take the plus uh, square root of 16 minus x squared, that just gives you the top part of it all. So this formula finds the arc length of a function. So let's take a look here. It says, uh, let f of x equals 2 x to the 3 halves. Calculate the arc length of the graph over the interval 0 to 1. Round your answer to three decimal points. OK. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1. Uh, and then I have the square root of 1 plus the derivative, well, the derivative here, oops, bring the 3 halves down, times 2x, and then subtract 1, so it's that 1 half. So what is that, 3 square root of x? But then I'm going to square that. So isn't that just 9x? That's, that's pretty easy. Okay, but I'm going to take the derivative of that. So now... This problem, I should be able to plug into my calculator without any problems. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, this old calculator, you have to put it in a certain way. So I always thought that I have to put in um, the function first. So that's going to be the square root of 1 plus 9x, um, comma. What variable are you using? X, comma, where do you start? Zero, comma, where do you end? One. 
still think I did wrong. Hit enter. <sighs> I'll go to error. So, oh, I, th I didn't put a parenthesis there. I, I wonder if I need to put a parenthesis in there. All right. So I'm going to go back again. <laughs> Not 100% sure how to use my calculator. Uh, 1 plus x, comma, x, um, comma, 1. Oops, comma, 0, comma, 1. All right, let's see if that works. 2.26, 8. It's always. All right, so that's my arc length. That's what I'm saying the arc length is. Uh, let's take a look. I wonder if I have the answer key. Ha, 2.268. So fairly easy to do with a calculator if you know how to plug it into your calculator. But it's just 1 plus the derivative squared. That gives you arc length. So here it says, let f of x equal x squared. Calculate the arc length of the graph of f of x over the interval from 1 to 3. Okay? So you got the integral from 1 to 3. You've got 1 plus, well, the derivative of that is just 2x, right? But then we're going to square that, so that's 4x squared. Okay, plug that into your calculator. And again, I can do this one, I think. Um, let's, uh, oops, so I'm going to go down to f int. And first thing I'm going to do is put in the square root of 1 plus 4x squared, uh, parentheses, comma, x, comma, 1, comma, 3. And I get 8.268 for my answer. So the arc length, and, you know, for this one, visually we can see it, x squared is that. We're going from 1 to 3. Well, that's 3 comma 9 here, right? And this is 1 comma 1. If you just drew a straight line, that's going to be like 8, isn't it? Because we're going from 1 to 9. So it looks like it's going to be close to 8. And But it's a arc, so it should be a little bit more, right? So uh, just looking at it kind of makes sense to me that that should be my answer. See if I have my answer key here, 8.26A5. All right, that is it for today. It was a quick lesson without any questions. It goes really fast. All right, you guys have a great week. If you have any questions, please never hesitate to email or call me. Bye.